Hey guys, it's Will, a third and long. Welcome to our Week 10 Sunday Best Bets video for the 2023 NFL season. We'll be looking at the money line, spreads, and the over-under for Week 10. So we've already had Thursday night. We already had the Bears take down the Panthers 16-13. So very close game there without Justin Fields. But let's go ahead and get started. Hit that like button and subscribe. So kicking things off at 9.30, we have our Frankfurt-Germany game. We have the Colts coming in at 4-5 and five versus the New England Patriots at 2-7. and seven. So the Colts, two and a half point favorites here. The over-under is 42 and a half. This has the potential to be a really low-scoring game. Every game in Europe seems to be really low-scoring these days. The Colts, they have Gardner Minshew at quarterback. They have the deepest running back room in the country. They have Moss. They have Jonathan Taylor. They have Pittman at wide receiver. Patriots have virtually absolutely nobody. They have Mac Jones back there throwing picks. So I definitely think that the Colts should get things back on track here. I have the Colts winning 23-20. So I have them covering that spread. And I'm also going with the over. Patriots are the second lowest scoring team in the league right now at about 15.8 points per game. So it's pretty hard. So if you basically score 16, you have a really good shot to beat the Patriots. Coming in at 1 p.m. on CBS, we have the 4-4 four and four Texans versus the Cincinnati Bengals at Five and three. Cincinnati is six and a half point favorites here over under 46 and a half. So the Texans, CJ Stroud, last week, five touchdowns, 470 yards, hands down the offensive rookie of the year. This guy has 2,300 yards, four touchdowns, and only one interception. But the Bengals, Burrow is back to doing what Burrow does. He's had the hot hand the last three or four weeks. He's definitely back on track since he started out this year hurt. They have weapons, they can run the ball. They have Jamar Chase. They can throw it. They have Burrow. This game could definitely go either way, but I'm going to side with the hot hand right now with the Bengals. If if it comes down to Joe Burrow, I think he will be able to lead them down the field, get the fourth quarter touchdown. So I have Cincinnati winning this one, 28-20, covering that spread, and I'm also going with the over. Coming in at 1 p.m. on Fox, we have the 5-4 and four New Orleans Saints. They've definitely gotten things going the last few weeks versus the Vikings at 5-4. and four. So a matchup of the 5-4s. and fours. New Orleans, three-point favorites. Over-under is 40 and a half here. So the Saints, they have one of the better rosters on paper. They have a very good defense. They have a lot of offensive weapons, but Carr has been kind of off and on this year. But he's starting to go vertical because he was doing a lot of dump-off passes previously. So they definitely have the better team here. Vikings, they have Josh Dobbs, came in, was only on the team for about five minutes, came out, won the game last week, throwing a four-game winning streak. They don't have Kirk Cousins. They don't have Justin Jefferson. I think if they have those guys, they win this game. But without them, I'm going with New Orleans to get the win here. They have the better defense. They're going to put a lot of pressure on Josh Dobbs. And the guy just hasn't been there that much. Uh, he's only been there about eight days so far. So I have New Orleans winning this game 30 to 20. So getting a comfortable win, I have them covering and I'm going with the over as well. At 1 p.m. on CBS, we have the Green Bay Packers at three and five versus the Steelers at five and three. Pittsburgh, three and a half point favorites here over under 38 and a half. So this is probably going to be a pretty low scoring sloppy game. Packers, Jordan Love, is not having a good season at all. He's definitely not the answer at the quarterback position. This guy's not a rookie. He's been there for a couple of years backing up Rodgers. He's not it. Cannot throw the ball accurately past five yards. They have a decent defense, but they have virtually no offense. Steelers have a good defense led by TJ Watt. Their offense is pretty questionable. Pretty much they've been outgained every single game this season but I don't think the Packers are going to outgain them this year. So Pittsburgh, three and a half point favorites here. I have them getting the win, 21 to 18. So I don't think they'll cover that spread, but I do think that they will go over. But like I said, this has the potential to be a really low scoring matchup here because neither offense is good at all. Coming in at 1 p.m. on CBS, we have the three and five Titans versus the three and five Buccaneers. So a matchup of the three and five teams. Tampa Bay is a one point favorite. So this is virtually a pick em here and the over-under 39 and a half. Titans, Ryan Tannehill is out at starting quarterback, but the guy sucked anyways. They have Will Levis. He's actually looked pretty decent, 
the last two weeks. He's been getting the ball a lot to Hopkins. For the Buccaneers, Baker Mayfield is actually having a pretty decent year, but it's actually the defense that failed him last weekend versus the Texans here. But Tampa Bay does have the far, well, they have a pretty good defense. Titans have a very good defense. So this game can potentially be a low-scoring game. But if it gets down to it, Buccaneers have the better roster. They have the better offensive weapons, and they have the more experienced quarterback. Because like I said, Baker is actually having a pretty decent year this so, so, so far. So I actually think that Tampa Bay is going to get the win here. I have them winning a pretty close one, 24-21. to 21. So I think they'll cover that one-point spread, and I'm also going with the over. But the Titans have a very good defense, so I would not be surprised if this game was flipped the other way. But if I had to, I would be going with the Buccaneers. At 1 p.m. on Fox, we have the San Francisco 49ers at 5-3 and three versus the Jaguars at 6-2. and two. Both teams had bye weeks this past weekend. San Francisco, three-point favorites, over under 45.5. 49ers are on, are on a three-game losing streak. They definitely need to get back on track. But just due to the law of averages, they're due for the win right now. They have a the number seven defense. They have a pretty good offense on paper. But Brock Purdy has been really screwing things up the last three weeks. But look for him to be getting back on track this game. He just has to manage the game. Don't try to do too much. Don't try to win the game. For the Jaguars, they're 6-2, and two, but something just feels off. Trevor Lawrence isn't having a good statistical year. They're 6-2, and two, but it doesn't really seem like they're playing like a 6-2 and, and two team so far. So something just kind of seems off here. So this seems like it's, to me, lining up to be a San Francisco victory. So they are three-point favorites, 45.5 for the over and under. 49ers are adding in Young. That could make a big difference here. I think the 49ers should get back on track, should get back in the win column. They can't possibly drop four straight, right? So I have the 49ers winning 32-17. I think they'll cover that spread, and I'm going with the over. Coming in at 1 p.m. on Fox, the 5-3 Cleveland Browns versus the 7-2 Ravens. Baltimore, 6.5-point favorites, over under 38.5. So for Cleveland here, sitting at 5-3. What's up with Deshaun Watson? He's supposed to be playing as of right now. But it is Deshaun Watson at any point he could get touched and just sit out the rest of the game. So we don't really know. Don't take that as a given so far. The, the guys only played about 30 snaps this year. For the Ravens, they honestly seem like the most rounded team at this point of the season. They have a top 10 offense. They have a top 10 defense. They can throw the ball. They can run the ball. They can play special teams. They can play great defense. So they're not lacking in any one area. Cleveland. They have the number one total defense, though, in the league. That can keep them in the game. Deshaun Watson, as of right now, he's not playing like the Deshaun Watson of old. So he can win you the game, but they can rely on that defense to bottle up Lamar Jackson. But I just think the Ravens are too much, and they're way too talented. So I'm going with the Ravens to get the win here. I have them winning 24-21. to So I have them not covering the spread, but I am going with the over. At 4.05 on CBS, we have the 4-5 Falcons versus the 1-8 Cardinals. So Atlanta, two-point favorites here, over under 43.5. Now, Cardinals are god-awful. So the fact that the Falcons are only two-point favorites here, that just lets you know how much Vegas has absolutely no respect for the Falcons because they honestly haven't done anything. They are loaded on the offensive roster, but the playmakers do not get the ball Bijan Robinson does not get used at all. They never throw to Kyle Pitts. So there's weapons there, but there's no quarterback to get them the ball. That's the biggest problem with the Falcons. If they just had a serviceable quarterback, they should be 10-point favorites here. Because the Cardinals, they traded Josh Dobbs. Kyler Murray's supposed to be coming back this Sunday, but the guy hasn't played football in about six years. So really, what is he going to do this weekend? And it really doesn't matter. He has no weapons. I don't know why they're playing him anyways. They need to throw every single game to try to get the number one pick. I have the Falcons getting the win this weekend. I have them winning 23-17, to 17, covering the spread. I am going with the under here. But this game has the potential to just be a really sloppy, messy, ugly game. Coming in at 4.05 on CBS, 
We have the Detroit Lions at 6-2 and two, coming off the bye versus the Chargers at 4-4 four and four, coming off of a really just sloppy win versus the Jets. Detroit three-point favorites over under 48 and a half. So Detroit next to the ne- next to the Ravens is one of the more balanced teams in the country. Top 10 offense, top 10 defense. They can run it. They can throw it. Special teams, defense. Whatever they have to do to win the game, they can get the job done. Chargers, they leave a lot to be desired on the defensive side of the ball. They're not good at defense really at all. They have big names, but they don't make big plays. Their offense is loaded. They have Herbert. They have Eckler. They have Allen. They don't have Mike Williams, but he's always hurt anyway, so they don't really need him. Chargers, with their offense, can always stay in the game. They can make this a shootout. Detroit's three-point favorites over under 48 and a half. I'm putting my money on the Lions. They are the way better team. I have them winning 30 to 24, so I have them covering that spread, and I'm going with the over as well. 425 on Fox, we have the New York Giants at 2 and 7. They're going nowhere this year versus the Cowboys at 5 and 3. Dallas 17 point favorites. Massive spread there. Vegas has them beating the crap out of the Giants. Over under is 38 and a half. So, with the Giants, there's not much to say there. They're not good at anything. They don't play offense, they can't play defense. Anyone can score on them. They had some competitive games this year. But they gave that up because the next week they would just get blown out. So I'm not expecting much from them. This is a big rivalry game. So maybe they'll get up. But Daniel Jones is hurt. He stunk anyways. They really have no direction going forward. The only thing that they need to do is lose every game. Try to get a top five draft pick. Try to draft either Caleb Williams, Drake May. Try to get a future at the quarterback position because Daniel Jones is definitely not it. Should have never signed him. Cowboys 5-3. and three. They had a very good loss this past weekend. They lost, but they looked really competitive versus the Eagles. Dak Prescott has played really well the last four weeks. I have the Cowboys winning this game. They have a top five defense. They have Dak Prescott. They have Lamb. They have Pollard. They're the way better team. Cowboys should cruise to an easy win. I have them winning 35-14, to covering that spread, and I'm going with the over. At 425 on Fox, we have the Washington Commanders at 4-5. and five. They're a flip-flop team. They play good, play like garbage, play good, play like garbage. Versus the Seahawks at 5-3 and three, coming off of a loss. Seattle, 6.5-point favorites here, over-under 44.5. So Seattle, they have an efficient offense. Geno Smith is not playing as well as he did last year, but he's serviceable. They have a pretty good defense. Commanders, they have no defense but Sam Howell's okay at quarterback. Sometimes he can put up some stats. Problem is, is he gets hit constantly. He's the most sack quarterback. He's definitely going to be under a lot of pressure here. Seahawks are just the better team. They're the safer pick. They have a really good run game, so they can run the clock down. They can play defense. I have Seattle getting the win. 28-20 to covering, and I'm going with the over. At 8-20 on NBC, the 4-4 four and four Jets versus the four and five Raiders. So the Jets, one point favorites here. So virtually a pick them over under 36 and a half. A pretty low scoring game here because neither of these teams have very good offenses at all. Jets actually have a god awful offense. It's not their fault. They had Rodgers. He got hurt. They've been stuck with Zach Wilson. Zach Wilson has just not been costing them the game. They went on a really long winning streak here. I said last week they were due to lose. They lost. It's just He's not costing you the game, but he's definitely doing absolutely nothing to win you the game. Just their their only goal with him is don't throw three picks, throw for 150 yards, let the defense win the game. That will get you some victories versus really crappy teams, but you're not going to be able to beat anybody good like that. So that so that was bound to end. Raiders are fired Josh McDaniels. They have the weapons. They have a very skilled roster. Since they fired Josh McDaniels last week, They actually looked pretty fired up this past weekend. I think that's going to continue here. So I'm actually going with the upset here. I think the Raiders should get back-to-back wins. I have them winning 23-17. to So I'm going with the plus one here, but I'm going with the over. Next game, Monday night final game of the week. We have the Denver Broncos at 3-5 versus the Buffalo Bills at 5-4. Denver's 3-5. So... Buffalo seven point favorites here over under 46 and a half Broncos since they got curb stomped and got 70 put on them by the Dolphins. They've actually been playing pretty decent 
Russell Wilson is not having a bad year at all. Sean Payton, I don't like him. He's just a serviceable coach, way overrated. But the roster is actually way better than their record. They've been gradually getting better. Now, they started off completely god-awful. So they're not good, but they're getting better. They're slowly climbing up the rungs. Buffalo Bills, they need to get stuff right. They cannot drop to 5-5. Five and five. They cannot afford to drop to 500 or people need to be getting fired this weekend. They cannot let that happen. They must win this game. It's an embarrassment if they lose to the Broncos. I have the Buffalo Bills finally getting back on track, getting the win 32-20. I'm going with them to cover, and I'm going with the over. Teams on the bye, the Chiefs, the Rams, the Dolphins, and the Eagles. But that's my breakdown of the Week 10 Best Bets for Sunday. Hit that like button and subscribe. Thanks.